in the first video on <coughs> on interest, we looked at the fact that the amount of interest paid or received is equal to the principal, multiplied by the rate, multiplied by the time. This produces a linear growth in the amount that is available for final value. If at the end of each period, year for example, the amount, the final value, is reinvested as the new principal, we get what is called compound interest. For example, the principal, $1,000. A rate of 5%. We look at the time, the number of years. After the first year, In the first year, the amount of interest is equal to the principal multiplied by the rate multiplied by the number of years. The final value is of course equal to the principal plus the interest rate. In the second year, we use final value from the previous year as the new principal. Multiply it once again by the rate and once again by one for a single year. This gives us a larger value of the interest. The final value is equal to the previous year's final value plus the interest for the second year. We can repeat this for further years, where the interest is equal to the previous year's final value, multiplied by the rate, multiplied by one year. And so the final value can also be added. This can continue. Eventually, we repeat this over and over. However, there's a slightly simpler way to do this. Since the relative positions of each of the cells, the final value and the interest, are in the same places, if we use an absolute reference, Put a dollar sign before the cell values. We are able to copy the formula. And so now we have C7, value, final value at the end of the third year, multiplied by the interest rate, which is C2, multiplied by the one year to get our new interest. We add previous year's final value and the interest for the year. You'll notice the number of decimal places keeps changing. So we can actually tell it, tell Excel, to give two decimal places, which is much more sensible when you're working with money. We can then continue to copy down the formula. For 10, Years, and we'll see how the amount gradually increases. <coughs> if we use the same interest value, so simple interest, and 
can be used to save fifty dollars each year. So the interest, the original principal, multiplied by the rate, multiplied by the time. Once again, using the absolute values. the same interest every year. So we could even use the absolute value the principal. So it's three we use value plus the years interest. You'll notice the simple interest gives us a much smaller final value than using the compound interest formula, where the final value from the previous year is reinvested to give us an increasing amount of principal, so an increasing amount of interest, and a much increased final value. The formula for final value formula for compound interest much can be found mathematically here once again a the amount the amount, but for the compound interest formula, it's the amount of the amount after interest over n periods. I'll explain what the n means in a moment. P, once again, is the principal. I is used to represent the interest rate. And N is the number of interest periods. Now, this little hat symbol represents to the power of So the number of interest periods depends on how regularly the interest is compounded. I is the interest rate per period, rather than the actual straight rate. With our original compound interest example, we looked at interest rates and compound periods of one year. However, interest can be compounded more regularly than one year. Half yearly, quarterly, weekly, daily even. Loan sharks are known to compound on an hourly basis unless they give you a compound fracture. A bad teacher joke. So the amount after you invested, which is a form of the final value. Is equal to the principal multiplied by one plus the interest rate per period to the power of the number of interest periods. You don't have to be able to work this formula out. You just need to be able to use it. 
Here's an example. Once again, we look at the $1,000. We'll have a look at interest rate, point oh five or five percent. And let's say our time is two years. If we compound yearly, the final value, the amount at the end, is equal to the principal multiplied by 1 plus interest rate per period to the power of the number of periods. This gives us a final value, an amount of $1,102.50. You'll notice that's the same as we had after two years with our annual compounding. If we decide to calculate our interest twice a year, the rate is now halved, 2.5%, but the number of periods is now doubled. And so we actually get an increased amount. It's only a few cents more, but over a period of years and decades, this few cents per year can be very significant. So there we have the calculation the amount, if you know the principal, the interest rate, and the number of payments. There are also ways to calculate the initial principal if you know the final amount. The principal is equal to the amount divided by 1 plus the interest to the power of the number of interest periods. If we know the amount in the principal, we can also find the interest. This is a slightly more complicated formula, but the rate per period is equal to the nth root of the amount divided by the principal. Now, the nth root is the same as finding 1 on n to the power and then subtracting 1. Now this is a little more complicated formula but if you can get it to work it can be very useful. Having a look at this compound interest formula, you should be able to complete task 3 on an interesting dilemma part 1. And using these compound interest formulas, you'll be able to complete part 2.